Hello everybody and greetings from the Delta College Planetarium. My name is Brian and I'm here to bring you a guide to finding the constellations of the winter sky as seen from Bay City, Michigan. During the long nights of winter, a lot of very bright stars and constellations grace the night sky. We'll set our sky for 10 p.m. on February 1st, facing south. During the summer, we used the Summer Triangle to find constellations, and during the autumn, we used the Autumn Square. Similarly, in the winter, we have a useful shape in the sky. The Winter Circle is a large, roughly circular collection of some of the brightest stars visible in the sky any time of year. In fact, five of the ten brightest stars seen from Earth are either on or within the Winter Circle. This circle touches nearly all of the Winter Constellations. We'll use one of the constellations within the Winter Circle to find the rest. We start with maybe the most famous constellation, Orion the Hunter. Orion is easy to spot because he's made of seven very bright stars, and three of them are very close together in nearly a straight line. Orion is supposed to form the image of a person, and these three stars form his belt. Orion has two legs below the belt, and two shoulders above. A faint group of stars forms his head. He carries a shield to his right, and a club raised above his head. Of all of the constellations, I think Orion looks most like the image he's supposed to represent. Orion also has a sword hanging from his belt. Seen under moderately dark skies, the sword may appear fuzzy to the eye. This is because the sword is actually a nebula, a huge cloud of gas and dust in space. Because this one is in the constellation Orion, it's named the Orion Nebula. The Orion Nebula is one of the brightest nebulae seen from Earth, and easy to see by eye. The nebula is about 1400 light years from Earth. The Orion Nebula is special not only because it's bright, but also because it's a stellar nursery. New stars are being created from the gas and dust of this nebula right now. Orion is made of some very bright stars, and bright stars get names. The two brightest stars in Orion are the red star on Orion's shoulder and the blue star in Orion's knee. The red star is named Betelgeuse. Betelgeuse is an enormous red supergiant star nearing the end of its life. We can say with certainty that one day soon, Betelgeuse will explode as a supernova, the cataclysmic end of an enormous star that can outshine all the stars of a galaxy, probably sometime in the next 100,000 years, soon in the astronomical sense. The blue star is named Rigel and sits along the winter circle. Rigel is a blue supergiant. It's maybe 20 times more massive than the sun and is hundreds of thousands of times more luminous. Someday it too will explode as a supernova. We'll use the stars of Orion to find the other constellations of the winter circle. Let's look at Orion's belt. Those belt stars aren't straight across Orion, they're kind of tilted. Draw a line through all three of those stars and follow that tilt down into the left. That line will lead you to this very bright star. In fact, this is the brightest star in the night sky, which means it's the second brightest star seen from Earth. The brightest is, of course, the Sun. But this is the second brightest, and its name is Sirius. Sirius is the brightest star in Canis Major the great dog. Sirius marks the dog's collar. Above, a triangle forms the dog's head. Behind Sirius is the dog's back and tail, and he has one hind leg and one front leg. Orion has another dog in the night sky, and the brightest star in it makes a nice triangle shape with Sirius and Betelgeuse. This star is Procyon, and it is the brightest star in Canis Minor the little dog. But there's not much competition for brightest star in Canis Minor because the constellation is just made of Procyon and the star right next to it. It's a very simple constellation. Orion is standing above another constellation, the only one we'll explore that's outside the Winter Circle. This one represents an animal that Orion has slain. Lepus, the hare, is formed from this kind of two-lobed structure. The large one on the left is the hare's body, and the one on the right is the head. Two ears extend up towards Rigel. Back to Orion's belt. This time we'll follow the belt stars up and to the right. That line leads to this bright red-orange star named Aldebaran. 
Aldebaran sits in this V-shape of stars. This V-shape is a star cluster named the Hyades. All of these stars form together as a cluster that is slowly pulling apart. All of them, except Aldebaran. Aldebaran is an unrelated interloper that is just passing through. Aldebaran forms the red, angry eye, and the Hyades, the face, of the constellation Taurus, the bull. Taurus has two huge horns extending from the ends of the V. Below the V is the bull's body, and to the right of the V is the bull's back. On Taurus's back is a fuzzy object. Observers might see four or five stars in this object. Very sharp-eyed observers may see six or even seven stars. This is a star cluster called the Pleiades. The Pleiades are further from Earth than the Hyades, but they are more compact and younger. The stars in this cluster are only about 100 million years old. People with the very best eyesight on the Earth can see about seven stars in this cluster, but a pair of binoculars will reveal that they are actually hundreds of stars. The brightest central stars of this cluster can look like a tiny dipper shape, but don't mistake the Pleiades for the Little Dipper. Follow the right-hand horn of Taurus up to its point. Coming off this point, up and to the right, there's a pentagon of stars. It might look kind of like a house with slanted walls. This is Auriga, the charioteer. The brightest star in Auriga is Capella, and Capella is one of the brightest stars in the sky, making it easy to spot. The final constellation of the Winter Circle is found by once again looking at Orion. Draw a line from Rigel and Orion's knee to Betelgeuse and Orion's shoulder, and extend that line out. It will pass between these two stars. These are Castor and Pollux, the heads of Gemini, the twins. On the left, Pollux has a short body and long legs, while on the right, Castor has a long body with short legs. The twins are arm in arm. Castor is a noteworthy star. Many of the stars that we see in the sky are actually multiple stars, maybe two or three stars orbiting each other. Castor isn't a double or triple system, though. It's a sextuple star system. Three binary pairs of stars all orbiting each other. Gemini completes the winter circle of stars. A convenient fact about the winter circle that can help in memorizing the names of the stars is that they are in alphabetical order going counterclockwise from Aldebaran. Aldebaran, Capella, Castor, Pollux, Procyon, Sirius, and uh, Rigel. Alphabetical order, except for Rigel. The winter sky is host to some of the brightest stars, some of the easiest constellations, and some of the most interesting deep sky objects to find in the night sky. So stargazers brave enough to face the cold Michigan winter nights are in for a treat. This is Brian from the Delta College Planetarium, wishing you clear skies.